All right, last but not least, we're going to hear from John Olander, and the title of his presentation is The Most Awesome Way to Find Plant and Home Problems Before They Impact the Customer, which I really like. Elise. John, come on out. <coughs> Elise, over this Jeez. way. <laughs> I, I get it now. It's every, every so, other one. Okay. Do you want me to just stand here? Or? No, let's talk Sit, for a minute. Talk? Okay. Yeah. All right, so <coughs> I know a little bit about this app. I think it's super cool, the Network Scout. Yes, it is. Describe it, or, or do you want me to? So, no, it's okay. actually it's actually a end-to-end -end tool that uh, allows us to monitor and really see um, how the health of the network is from the hub site all the way down to the customer CPE. Um, it was developed by a, a maintenance technician in our White Marsh facility uh, to try to make his job easier, so he can like, you know really prioritize and understand where he has to do his maintenance on the HFC plant. Uh, and then we took the tool and really, over the last two years, have really dumped a lot of intelligence and algorithms into it to really drive our entire maintenance application for the whole uh, network. Plus, it, it, it helps prioritize everything, and uh, it, you know, it's, it's the only tool that our operation centers are using from an HFC perspective. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it uses some part of the cable modem, right? Like it, it <coughs> it does I mean, today. It, it, this tool is unprecedented. Yeah, to today it it, it's yeah. using the uh, uh, DOCSIS uh, devices for all of the logistics to tell, you know, yeah. to determine plant faults versus, uh, you know, hardline versus in the home, in the drop wire. Uh, we also have the legacy video uh, set-top boxes uh, data getting uh, populated into the tool now. By the end of the year, we'll have that video data overlaid with the DOCSIS data to do a but much better, tighter correlation. So you not only can find problems, but exactly where they are, like right Pin where the squirrel chewed through the wire. Pinpoint them to within yeah. pretty, pretty close, uh, right. especially on the, in the plant, we can get to a couple feet. Okay, yep. should we take a look? Yes. Are we going to do the, uh, <coughs> poll the audience and get an address? Uh, we can do that, or I can do a quick, uh, uh, just to show you what the tool looks like okay, and yeah. how it detects then, some things. Then we'll go interact. So, you know, again, when you, when you uh, open the tool up, this is your main dashboard you would get. Yep. Uh, it's got the map. A, lo a lot of the dots on there, you know, talks about uh, how many outages that we have in the HFC plant at any, gi any given time. And, you know, you can understand, we got 700,000 miles of, of uh, coax cable, so, um, you know, the plant runs pretty good, but it, it uh, scores everything. Uh, on the node side into a plant integrity score, which really it, what it's doing is, is looking for plant faults that are detected by the tool. Faults are um, thresholds that are, are outside of parameters that we specify. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then, and then it, it, it correlates them and, and molds them together and then gives you a score. We also have the ability to click into a DOCSIS integrity score, which is the in-home wiring and CPE version of the plant integrity score which is pretty neat because now we can see whether the problem's in the home or in the hard line. Can you tell where, like there's a micro reflection in the basement kind of to that granularity? Uh, I can, I can on the, in the home I can see the micro reflection within 85 feet. So I know it's within 85 okay. feet of the device. When I get into the hard line, I actually have a ETDR that'll get me within two feet of the actual break or cut in the plant. Nice. So uh, again, so, uh, you know, and you have uh, multiple ways to drill down into this, but you can, uh, uh, you know, drill down to, That happens to me all the time. Yeah, I didn't want to do. I didn't want to go that far into it. All right, let me just see what happened here. Oh, there it goes there. Watchtower. That was its code name, right? Yeah, it's. Uh, it's a good code name for. It was up here sleeping kind of for that little period of time, and I should have probably just logged back into it. Well, while we're at this, we we cannot talk about this tool without mentioning the name of Larry Woolcott, right? Yeah, Larry has the done. Guru, see, he's with us even right now. Larry has done the the really the background engineering on the flux side. Yeah. So the, really, when you're talking about the flux detecting, capacitor. Yeah, when you're talking about detecting the micro reflections and, and uh, in channel frequency response issues, um, Larry has done the main piece of that for us, and he's also working right now on the full band capture. So there's a, right. there's a uh, you know in the Broadcom chip there's the ability to look at the entire forward spectrum. Uh, out of, you know, using a cable modem to see that in, in the customer's home, in the DOCSIS device. And uh, we're working uh, to get that totally up and running. We have about 180,000 of those modems that are capable today in our system, so mm -hmm. we can see some of that. But uh, again, I mean, it's, you know, you have a, 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 
a bunch of different uh, layers you can lay on the map. You, like we, I, we have uh, a, a pretty extensive project going on right now with our mapping teams where we're, we're actually digitizing and databasing all of our entire uh, system maps. They are actually will are integrated right into the tool. So now when you, you go and you look at the nodes, which you can search by node, by Mac, by account number, by phone number. I'll show you how easy it is. I'll put my phone number in there. Uh, there it goes. It pulls up my account, pulls up my node. I have the ability to open that node. And while that node's can opening... Can you check mine at the office? I can do that. Okay. Uh, let this node open real quick. Okay. Uh, while this node's open, and I do want to say that there's full automation in the background of this tool. Um, it it auto-detects outages. It'll auto-ticket the outage. It'll auto-dispatch and auto-page the technician. And then when the auto outage is fixed, it auto-closes the outage. Uh, on the plant fault uh, pieces, there, there's what it looks like when you look at a node. So where do you live? Pennsylvania? Uh, oh, yeah. I live in uh, right outside of Philadelphia City. I grew up in Doylestown, PA. So this and is your node. There's my house right there. Okay. And then you can click on the house, and it'll actually give you the, the actual uh, levels uh, uh, that we're looking for to try to do the correlation. So what the tool is doing, for, what the tool is really doing in the background is, is physically going through each one of these DOCSIS device, devices we have, taking all these parameters and readings that we get back, and it's looking at those readings and saying, okay, where I have the same threshold for upstream signal to noise or downstream receive, where I have the same match within two, three, four houses all clumped together, it then can take that and start correlating and saying, okay, I think I have a hard line problem. Mm -hmm. Where it does, sees disparate differences in thresholds, then it knows, the tool knows that those thresholds are really in the home, inside the drop wire, and not in the plant. So um, that is cool. you have the ability to go into these nodes and look at everything uh, again by uh, all the levels, all the addresses, uh, whatever you want to do. Uh, the, the node, every node has its own history screen. So um, every, every event, every ticket that gets opened in this node logs into this history screen. You can get into this history screen anytime you want. Um, you do have uh, the ability, if you are working in this Freedom Region, for instance, to search your worst nodes. The tool will automatically sort the nodes by what has the most customer impacting issues uh, top to bottom and so, allow you to so go work these things. Do your divisions compete on? They do. Yeah? They do, Are and they're winning? really, uh, well, I actually have the whole country, oversee the whole country, okay, so it, right. I, I win either way. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, but it, it is very competitive out there, and uh, no one wants to be called out and said that they're the, in last place. So yeah, uh, right. of the 13 regional op operating centers, um, you know, that, to, to be in last place is not, not really where someone wants to be. It's so not what's good your, for your career. It's 303-830-2553. Three three and this is a apartment building, so. There it is right there. There, there it is. So. And again, you can search <clears throat> by account, you can search by MAC address, you can search by uh, street address. Uh, it'll locate the, the nearest node. The tool will auto-detect uh, plant faults, it'll auto-detect flux. Uh, issues, it'll, it, those little, uh, and hopefully one will show up in this node here when it comes up. So what, talk, talk us, what, what has happened since you implemented this in terms of cost savings or? or so it, or, it's driving stuff like uh, first call resolution yeah. uh, is really uh, driven down. Oh, there's uh, Cheeseman Park. Yeah, it's allowed our MTTR on, uh, our mean time to restore on outage time to really be uh, corrected and fixed and went after. Um, <clears throat> it's allowed us to manage uh, and really understand in a real simple fashion, right? Allow the technicians that really do the maintenance work in the plant, do the maintenance work in the plant, and not have to do the analytics in the background to try to figure out where do I need to send my forces, where do I need my folks to work? Mm -hmm. This tool uh, does all that for us. This tool has the ability, too, that we added into it, like in, in a storm mode operations. Um, so if you have major storms or something coming through, you know, commercial power can be a, a headache and you don't know whether to run techs out there or not. We can put the tool into storm mode where the, where the tool will shut off its auto paging on outages. It'll still look at the, 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 the detection and, and everything else and do all the correlations, 
But as these outages come back up, it'll start detecting between power and non-power related, so we can send our technicians out there. So what do you see? Uh, so this, this is actually not too bad. I mean, it's uh, you know got a couple little little issues here. Here's an account here that uh, I'll bring this up and I'll show you the uh, uh, device detail, and I'll show you what Flux looks like. So this is what uh, this is something like my, my neighbor. Yeah, this okay. is what this is what Larry uh, really worked on and, and built for us to get in here, and you can start seeing some of the ripple and and uh, uh, ICFR. It's actually the the uh, the for the non-engineer in the room, you can tell us what we're seeing. This one's not actually not that bad. I mean, <laughs> there might be a little little uh, little problem out in the plant because you are getting some um, time domains that, that says that there's a, a ripple uh, effect somewhere like 200 and third one 255 feet. So it's probably somewhere in, in the plant or in the tap, but nothing that will affect the uh, signal. This one's this one's actually pretty good. You also have the ability to go into any, any one of these accounts when we're looking, and this is what the technicians use all the time, is the ability to go look at history. Um, so I can go see my downstream receive power over time. Mm -hmm. Or I want to say, you know, I got a problem out there, I want to see what my uh, signal to noise looks like over time. <clears throat> it gives you the history. And the same thing on the nodes, I can click the history bar, and I can take that node and I can go back six months in history and look at what the node looked like while the problem was happening. So when we have intermittent issues out there, it's really good to know the time frame that the intermittent issues are happening. Because now I can scroll back in time and bring the node up Context, and, and yeah. have its exact yeah. uh, thresholds at that time to show. So it, it's got some uh, really neat functionality to it. That is super cool. Did so. you want to show us anything else? Because we're... No, that's, that's I mean, it. that's it. I mean, you know, over here is just, you know, uh, the, the block that we would use. The tool does a lot of the work for us. Uh, we do want, uh, you know, we do want to add the, the video piece in, which will go in here um, uh, sometime before the end of this year, which and will make it more And the Rocky powerful. Mountain Division is in first place, right? Uh, they're, they're near the top. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, John, very much. It hey, is definitely the you. coolest tool. All right, thanks. The most awesome way to find. It's, uh, it's good. All right, thanks, John.